Meanwhile, hi, this is Seb. And this is Marcus. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome back to another episode of Meanwhile. What are we discussing today, Seb? Rings of Power! Season 1 is now done. Uh, the season finale just finished. As a whole, Marcus, what are your thoughts? Okay, I'm just going to sum up in it like words that just coming out my brain. Lackluster. Lazy. Oh, Jesus. Oof. Um... Not as bad as I thought, but still okay. quite bad. Um, okay. Convenient. Okay. Um, lower breaking. Okay. Those are just a few words, but like said, okay. what, what, what did you think? Um, slightly disappointing. I think that's kind of like my overall feeling towards season mm. one. Now, I'm not as negative towards the series as you are, it would seem. Um, I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on this, but similar to like my sentiments for, for the last couple of videos we've done on Rings of Power, again, we apologize for not being able to do the last couple of episodes. Life got in the way, work got in the way, but here we are doing the final, uh, this, this season review. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I had very i think like the fact that this is the most expensive show of all time it automatically has that going against it right it, mm. it sets up that expectation of it having to be amazing now it wasn't bad in my opinion it wasn't amazing it was very meh like in the middle but there are loads of things especially in the finale that made me feel ah so I kind of see where you're coming from, um, you know, with, with your lackluster lore-breaking thing. I think the lore-breaking for me is the biggest thing, personally. Mm. Um, but all right, let's just like cut all the crap. What are your thoughts on how Brand is Sauron? Well, I called it ages ago. <laughs> yes, you did. Too, <laughs> like, you did. and and that, it actually annoyed me that he was Sauron mm. because, I, but then I, th th there are two there are two coins to that statement. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of people have, have kind of been defending it and being like, actually, Halbrand being Sauron is a testament to how Sauron is a, is such a good deceiver, and his name is obviously Sauron yeah, the true, Deceiver. Yeah, true, true. I totally see that. Fair. And he, he definitely was very good at selling himself, and yeah. you know, he was originally on his way to Numenor to go corrupt them and their values, yeah. and yeah. then he, conven he just so happened to bump into Galadriel, which is just a convenience to the max. And then he was like, fuck it, I'm going to go, you know, see Celebrimbor, get my rings. Um, that didn't bother me so much. I think it was more the predictability of it and how literally the whole fandom from what I see in like, you know, just like Reddit and YouTube comments is every episode, it's almost like a meme now where like, oh yes, the tree is Sauron. Oh yes, the water is Sauron. Oh yes, actually Galadriel. Is Sauron. Um, <laughs> it actually got to the point where, like, it did, it was so predictably annoying that I feel like a lot of the fandom were were just taking the piss out of it, which I feel like kind of it, I felt very deflated when he finally turned around and was like, "I'm Sauron," and you're like, "Yeah, I know. I've known for like eight episodes, bro." <laughs> As has the fandom. Um, but in saying that, I wasn't too offended. I was. I think Hal Brand's a good actor. Um, I think he's well written uh, in terms of his being a deceiver. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I didn't really care. I didn't, I didn't like feel anything when he like when the reveal finally. I kind of get what you mean. I do kind of get what you mean. Where like, obviously he's been, you know, part of the part of the series. He he was introduced in what like episode two or three or whatever. And yeah. he's been he's been a mainstay since then but at the same time you know you don't really get to be like yeah how brand or like <laughs> no how brand like it I, I i get that you know i feel like the and i'm sure this is something you're gonna bring up um i feel like yeah the the, the character development for a lot of the characters just wasn't there mm. i think it's more present for other characters like elrond and Durin, um, that's it. Maybe that's it. <laughs> maybe that's I, it. <laughs> but but I think 
like we've said almost every episode uh, every review Elrond and Durin highlights of the show for yeah, me yeah they were great I they can't great. I can't dent them they were great for sure but you, you were but, saying um, yeah I mean at the end of the day I think that we didn't need how brand to be anyone that's my opinion, because like my girlfriend, she really liked the fact that it, that Hal Brand was Sauron. She was one of the team Hal Brand Sauron thing. Mm. I'm like not against it, but I just like I'm opposed to the idea that Hal Brand, where every character in the show needs to become a big part yeah. of Middle Earth history. Like I feel like why couldn't Hal Brand just be a nice original character? Um, and this, and my same thing goes towards the stranger, who we'll get to in a bit. But yeah. you know, for me, like, yeah, I mean, it was. I get it. Like, he is the deceiver. He did deceive some people, and it it was it was for me. I don't know. For me, it was just kind of like a huh, Sauron. Okay, fair. Yeah, it, you know, it didn't it feel like a like <gasps> lackluster. You know, yeah, yeah it did. It. For I think me. It's, I feel like they were trying to make it be like a, mm. but for me it was like a, huh, sour. I think it's. I think the main reason behind that is is down to the writing, and the character exactly, development. Exactly. Is because we never, we were never made to feel anything towards him. Mm. Yeah, uh, 100%, we, he, 100%. Like you said, he he never had his moment. Like yeah. I guess the biggest moment he had in the show, X being you know like Sauron, was when he accepted being king of the Southlands, which again. Yeah. When you think about it, right, all of these people in the Southlands are just like, they instantly just accept that he's king from this line that was broken I mean, generations okay. ago. Nobody even bothered to Google yeah, it. Yeah, I'm glad that, like, Galadriel finally was like, you know what, I need, uh, maybe we should check the lineage. Yeah. I'm glad that she finally did that, because, like, when you do think about it, when you pause a little bit and be like, yo, are we going to fact check this again? It's. It, I guess it's quite hard for everyone to fact check this shit, mm. and like, and like, you know, you had to be like an elven librarian archive for that to exist to know the records and shit. But yeah, for, I'm glad that at least they addressed that. Galadriel was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's because he was uh, acting so sus. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I do. I think let's move on to Galadriel though, because I I'm keen to hear what you think because this final episode kind of like was like for me the final nail in the coffin like i'm so done with this galadriel Fair. she just annoys me i think it's it's not like the acting like you know or anything like that i think it's the writing again mm. i think which is the core issue of the show mm. is the galadriel that we have in this show is is very impulsive um yeah. very illogical doesn't yeah. fact check this yeah. is the second time her lack of fact checking has has you know uh, change Middle Earth forever. Last instance was just not checking the damn dagger. And now we have Mordor. <laughs> so true. You know, so literally. So, so basically, Galadriel has, has just fucked Middle Earth. She invented yep. Mordor and she let Sauron get away. And also, more to that point, is the fact that she found out he was Sauron and didn't tell her. Yeah, anyone. that was another thing, for sure. And that was, was that another weird thing. promise. That she's mentioned to Elrond, it's like, remember our promise. And I'm like, look, whatever promise you have, whatever promise you have, cannot be important enough to literally say to all of your people, I literally was fucking with a dark lord himself. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's like the equivalent of Harry Potter coming back from the Triwizard Tournament and not telling anyone Voldemort was back. He's not back! He's <laughs> Voldemort's not back! Cedric Diggory just killed himself like, on his own accord. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's nah. It's, I get you. I it's get you. Madness. <laughs> I think like yeah, for sure. Like towards the end when she didn't tell anyone. I mean, I think like Elrond has found out, right? El Elrond knows now. But the fact that she doesn't say, and she just like, guys, uh, maybe we need to make more rings. Or some like yeah. surely you'd be like, oh, by the way, I think Sauron's here. I, I think you um, would at least tell Celebrimbor. And the fact that like she was like, oh, we're never gonna, we're not gonna see how brand new here anytime soon or whatever. And Caleb sure, was like, I shouldn't we? I mean, there's a part of me that's like, shouldn't we try and go after this fucker? <laughs> the, yeah. It's fucking Sauron, and like, yeah. okay, he's in the mortal form now. Maybe like, is he? I don't know. But like, 
he's surely a sh- he's a shapeshifter. Yeah, so he, right. He, so, you know, but anyway, why don't we surely fucking go try after him? and he's on foot for fuck's sakes. We saw him at Mordor. He walks the fucking Mordor. Apparently. I think um I think that's an interesting thing as well though is the whole Mordor aspect because obviously this this you know uh, finale we didn't get any of the Southlands, uh, mm. which I thought was slightly odd. It, um, as much as I don't care for them, but in the context of the wider story and the events of Middle Earth, the fact that Mordor has just been invented and then we just kind of like leave it mm. is a bit odd. Like it felt very unfinished because mm. that tale, in a way, had only just begun. Mm. Um, but I suppose that's what the next season is season about. Season two in it, yeah. But in saying that, do you not think that you know? I don't know. The elves would have sent help, or the dwarves would have. No, the dwarves definitely wouldn't. But like, do you not think the elves would have gone to help, seeing as they were the rangers and they were watching these lands? Mm. I thought I thought it was a bit odd. Mm. Um, and I know that the elves are preoccupied with like you know trying to save their race, but at the same time, you know, Mordor has been invented. That's like a big chunk of land. You would still mm. probably send some sentries or some range. I just again, it's it's like. There are a lot of plot holes. There are a lot of inconveniences. There are a lot of con- well, there are more conveniences than inconveniences in right. the show. Right. Um, and I think it is down to poor or lazy writing, like however you want to mm. uh, call it. I mm. think character development suffered um, a lot in this mm. season. Um, you know, considering what we got just under 10 episodes I th- we had a I, lot of characters i to think be like to. like you've been saying this for the last couple of episode reviews that we've done um and now that the season is done i think i have to agree with you i feel like they the the showrunners really needed to kind of you know narrow down the amount of storylines happening and kind of just like focus a little bit more Mm. like obviously towards the end and the final couple episodes it did converge like the southland storyline and galadriel did like you know merge finally but yeah there there is definitely a part of me that feels like because we had so many characters we had arondil braun bronwyn or whatever the hell their names were i hate them yeah. <laughs> uh, galadriel halbrand calabrimbor elrond kim uh not gimli durin the harfoots the stranger that's 10 big, like you know big characters when maybe we could have done with a few without and the thing is like it's very it's so easy to compare because they were basically released at the same time house of the dragon had an ensemble cast as well and yet they were able to handle it a lot better when it comes to the character development, making you care for the characters mm. a lot more. And again, maybe you, maybe some people would say like you shouldn't compare. Fair enough, but it's just very easy to. But they're both fantasy. Because they are both fantasy, and they both came yeah. out at the same time. Um, but look, I think like visually, a lot like at the beginning there was a few iffy bits for me, but I feel mm. like this show towards the end really stepped up i think you know there were some incre- there wasn't some incredible cinematography some incredible effects the orcs looked great the, you know visually the show was great music yeah. pr- pretty good nothing amazing nothing I, too bad not, I, not too memorable. i really didn't like the song they ended the season on i don't remember what the song was. exactly that's Fair. never a good thing. <laughs> um, um but okay here's another big point Stranger is Gandalf now. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Because I have pretty strong thoughts on that. So I actually had a thought about the Stranger slash the Fuckfoots um, storyline overall <laughs> in the context of this whole this whole season. It didn't need to happen. The whole thing didn't need to exist. And the plot would have still gone to where we needed it to be. Um, which mm. actually annoys me more than anything. Um... I still have no love to the Harfoots. The fact that I thought so right, these little minions that you know come find Sauron or the Stranger. Yeah, they actually really annoyed me because the writing in that was awful. Mm-hmm. Like I just thought it was terrible. The fact that they were like shape shifting into they're fighting Harfoots. They're fighting fucking hobbits. Why mm. do you need to lure 
Norian by pretending to be the stranger. You could wipe them off the face of the planet in about I three mean, seconds. Legit, the, the shaved head girl basically had the powers of a wizard war. Exactly. Less. And it was Surely just Surely you could like, just be like, bang! <laughs> the, the other two were a bit useless. One of them literally had a knife, and the other one just, yeah, was just kind of there. But the, um, literally the bold one, right? She could have wiped them all off, and instead she lets herself get stoned. It's... It's you know? very... I mean, okay, firstly, this is kind of the similar thing that you get um, with the Hobbits in the original trilogy and in the Hobbit, mm, 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 mm. where somehow they survive <laughs> by, like, <laughs> they Mary and Pippin throwing rocks Machina. versus orcs, and the orcs are like, ah! <laughs> but, like, okay, that that aside, I agree, will always be fucking, like, why, how, but, yeah. okay. Yeah, like, the, the, the Sauron cultists or whatever yeah. like who the hell were they don't really know they just they confused they, just they, con they confused they just came out of nowhere and then they were like oh you're sauron and you're like okay and then turns out he's bloody gandalf okay we haven't got confirmation but he's fucking gandalf yeah he's, he's gandalf he, he said he says all the right freaking quotes and shit uh -huh. so like yeah that's that whole I don't know. I, uh, firstly, I agree. This whole thing felt pointless because, like, okay, yes, they could converge in season two. He might end up doing something, and it is Gandalf, so he probably will. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it does make you think, like, did we really need this in season one? Like, that mm. whole storyline of The Stranger could have happened in season two yeah. as one of the plot lines. And that would have been interesting. Like, imagine season one is about Galadriel. Season two is about the arrival of Gandalf. Now, mind you, it completely breaks lore. Um, like you said in the very beginning. Firstly, this is something that happened, I think, like two episodes ago. Galadriel's husband's dead. Celeborn's dead. And you're like, wait, what? Because yeah. Celeborn's in fucking fellowship. And you're like, <laughs> you're like okay. Excuse me? <laughs> so it's pretty yeah. obvious that they've decided to go on like an alternate universe yeah. route fair. So I guess like if we accept that, then fair enough, it's fucking Gandalf, right? I'm still annoyed that it's Gandalf, but oh well, it's fucking Gandalf. It goes back to the point that you said earlier of like, we just didn't need yeah, to like go back yeah, for on sure. these known we, characters. Because like genuinely, you're not going to beat Peter Jackson. Like You're just thing, not. Like, I mean, yeah. Why, do, why does everyone need to be a key character? Why does Gandalf need to be a key player? Gandalf isn't meant to be a key player. The Astari, like the whatever they're called, the wizards aren't meant to be there yet. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, okay, I guess that's why Gandalf is, you know, has such a good relationship with hobbits because he was friends with Harfoots, whatever, right? But then when you think about it, so during the War of the Last Alliance, Gandalf was there. You know, like... Huh? Is he? Is he? Is he? That, so does that mean Radagast, Sauron? Did Gandalf arrive before Sauron? Um, you know, do the blue wizards come in? And does that mean all the wizards are going to be there for the last yeah. alliance? Um, I think the in important. I think to, to if you want to break lore, make it make fucking sense, or at least write it in a way that's like really well written. So we can actually understand why you've made that creative decision to break lore, but I guess and you could add argue, in a character who don't need to be there. But I guess you could argue that we can't. We it's too early to say it. You know, it's season one, so we don't know oh, their justifications yet. Yeah, I mean, I can no. guarantee it now. Like in however many years' time, when they release season two, I'm gonna refer back to this moment right here now. And I'm still going to be pissed off in season two. Why is and Gandalf gonna, here? <laughs> not even that. It's going to feature more fuckfoots. The adventures yeah. of Gandalf and fuckfoot. Like, <laughs> just, I just hate the Harfoots, dude. My hatred of them is... Yeah, yeah. Like, bad. you know, like Lenny Henry or... I can't actually remember um, uh, the Hobbits. The, sorry, the, the Grand Harfoot's name, but he's Lenny Henry, the actor. Um, when he got killed, like, I just... You never felt. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't feel anything towards any of these characters. I think that's the main point that I'm probably gonna have to be like. That's the main reason why the show is not as good. Mm. Is the character you don't feel for the characters? Galadriel, like you said, annoying, entitled, just annoying, not very <laughs> likable. Just annoying. The yeah. Harfoots 
I don't mu I don't hate them as much as you do, but like you said, when 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 the one died, I was like, cool. <laughs> Recipes, yeah. bro. But all right. Yeah, you just kind of there like I'm surprised more of you didn't die. How Brand being Sauron, cool. That happened. Mm. The stranger being Gandalf didn't get the same reaction as I'm sure they would have wanted. Cause yeah. I'm sure they would have wanted like, a, <gasps> it's fucking Gandalf. But instead, I was like, it's fucking Gandalf. Mm. Um. So yeah, I think that's the main reason why for me this show probably didn't, you know, didn't didn't slap as much was because you just don't really care for the characters as much. Elrond, yeah. yes. Durin, yes. Yeah. Durin's wife, yes. I, I but I think you care about them when they're all together. I don't individually care about them. I care fair, about their fair. relationships fair. because like their conversations are very well written. Mm. That's like the, the 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 best writing in the show. Is the conversations between Elrond and Durin and his wife? Yeah, um, for sure. Th those are like the, the best parts of the show for me. Like Kaz Doom, or like I can't dent any of those things. Apart mm. from, why have you shown us the Balrog? Yeah, just, I don't just really mind bait. that. I don't. I don't it really it annoys that. me because it's like it's it's it's, it's there for no service. reason. I guess. Yeah, it's fan yeah. service for no reason because that Balrog's not supposed to be awake for like two thousand years. Is he just I mean, like chilling in his living room, like waiting? Yeah, it does. It does make you think, like, oh, so Durin's bane is already there. Like he's and just chilling. <laughs> maybe he, maybe Durin's bane. Hmm. Nah. When you think about it, yeah, it's like, yeah. Exactly. Wait a minute. I've thought about like, this. I came like, prepared. Because like Gimli remembers when, um, fucking uh, Casa Doom was like a paradise. So it must have been in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. so Durin's Bane wouldn't have been that mm -hmm. big a thing I don't know yeah like again it kind of just breaks it's, lore it's gonna break lore I think we just have to become comfortable with the fact that they're breaking lore which again like if you've written it well like, that's that's okay like that's fine um, but again don't give me fan service for the sake of fan service you know mm -hmm. what I mean mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say like you know going back to the stranger being Gandalf it, it doesn't offend me like huh? because we haven't like this whole season he's just kind of he's just bumbled and mm -hmm. kind of mumbled he's just a mumble rapper this whole season really he doesn't mm -hmm. really say much um i did one thing that i've i've kind of said a few times and i felt a lot in this episode was the pacing issues that the show has okay. i i definitely felt when nori was saying goodbye to her fellow fuckfoots, um, the pacing of that to me felt very, it was very drawn out. Like she was saying bye to these characters, like, you know, her friends, her family. And I'm like, I just don't care enough. I would care. <laughs> I would prefer if we were in Numenor because we barely got Numenor in this episode. Um, and, you know, something quite significant happened in Numenor, like the king died, you know, mm. and um, the queen is now blind, obviously, you know. Um, and they've just they've just arrived back in Numenor to like all of the black flags. I thought that was interesting because mm. I want to see what happens in Numenor because you know mm. um, Farazon, at least according to lore, you know he's corrupted by Sauron, uh, the word of Sauron, and then turns away from the gods, and then Numenor is sunk into the ocean, and that's how you know the Sealdor and his father come back to Middle Earth. So it'll be interesting to see. They formed Gondor. And, uh, was it Aragon? There was a. Um, there was another. There was another. Oh, Angmar. Oh, Angmar. Yes, yeah. they formed the kingdom of Gondor and Angmar, and then eventually Rohan is created as well. You know, so I think it's really interesting to see when the Age of Men is going to be ushered in because we should theoretically see that by the end of this show, um, or maybe even next season. It, I guess it depends. Um, I mean, because they've said that season five is going to be when the, the battle of the la the war of the last alliance will be. So I guess it'll be like season three or four will be when mm. the the freaking yeah the the countries are formed, Gondor, Rohan, etc. But you see, that's like when you put that into a perspective of like you know, let's say we're going to get eight episodes a season. If if we have four seasons left to establish the world of men, the world of Gondor. Uh, the world of you know Angmar, the elves 
the dwarves. That's like, that's a lot to cover. That is a lot, that is a lot for sure. But I guess like, look, uh, now we, the, the main thing, like you said, is they've established that this is no longer the same timeline or order of events that we, the, the, the books and the law and the pre-established lore is. So it's their, it's their own thing, right? It's like alternate mm. universe vibes. It's like Star Wars Legends or some shit. So, you know, I guess at this point it's freaking, it's, it's, you know, it's all, it's, uh, it's all for one, one for all, fucking, you know, it's, <laughs> hey, we it's could crazy, have like a crazy shit. We could have a mad time jump in the, in the next season. Exactly, season's. so yeah. God knows what's going to happen now, but overall season one, I think, on a technical standpoint, it was great. You know, okay, great. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I think like visually, they, they it did well enough it looked I think, expensive like, it looked expensive towards the end of the show it looked better because mm. at the beginning of the show i genuinely felt it looked cheap but as the show went on and the cinematography improved i think that's when it was like okay this yeah. feel like when numenor rode in on the horses with galadriel that was when i was yeah. like okay this feels like an expensive show when the volcano erupted and every and like the soot was everywhere that felt expensive mm. like it, it looked expensive so kudos to that yeah the acting so far has been pretty good as well yeah. kudos yeah. to that but i think the main thing that lets it down like marcus has said for so many times now and now i have to agree is the the writing for the characters too many characters too many storylines um it just you know it just makes you not care for some characters you know it's it just feels like there's too much going on and you're like eh, okay this happened bada bing bada boom yeah so yeah i think overall the amazon missed i think it was like a 5.5 out of 10 that's my that's my final score yeah marcus I, what about you i think that's a good score um personally i think i'd give it like a a 4.5 to a 5. Mm. Um, I think, again, like, you know, I, I, I sound very negative about the show, but I've said every at the end of every, every episode, I want it to slap. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel like it's just, you know, it's the fact that everyone wanted it to be good. And we all know it's like Lord of the Rings and it's the most expensive show ever. And the fact that it was just so lackluster makes it feel extra poo yeah and 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 okay and inevitably there will be people that are gonna comment and say oh just be happy with what you got why can't people just you know why why does everyone have to be angry why can't you just you know appreciate okay shut the fuck up (laughs) all right i've had enough with people settling for mediocrity Stay in your little town and never experience life and be happy with mediocrity and shit food and shit films, all right? <laughs> and if you were so high and mighty and high roading and so above us all and be like, Psh, why can't you just accept it? Then you can just click away, all right? Bye. It's true. Okay, now that that fucker's gone, <laughs> it was hella, it was meh. It was, it was hella meh. Let's be real. It was hella meh. Like, you know... You expect it to be a fucking 10 out of 10. It's Lord of the Rings. It's Amazon. It's the most expensive show. It was just meh. It was just hella meh. Is it bad? Maybe not, but it was just a meh for me. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I've, I've just, like, run out of words to say about it. I'm just so meh. Just, you know, like, if somebody, like, I was watching it with my missus, and she just gave up. Mm. She was just like, I can't be bothered. Yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend got bored of it as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the know, thing. It just felt very like... Yeah. And, and and like I feel like, to be fair, that is the worst thing a show could be. Mm. Meh. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, when a show is bad, then it's bad. And then you know it's bad. And then you can, you know, a lot of the time, bad shows actually are so bad, they're good. Mm. This is just meh. Mm. Um, True. So, yeah, 4.5 out of... Uh, to 5 out of 10... 5.5. I think these are pretty decent scores. You know, I think we're being quite positive, to be fair, in comparison to some of the videos that I've, I watch. 
people people be pissed um really? and i get it i get it Fair. you know like but i think at the end of the day it's important that we give it a, i think we've we've uh, not mentioned a, a ron deer uh enough i think he's actually one of the better characters oh yeah he oh, is yeah. the only original character in this show that has made me slightly feel something it's because he's the only elf that acts like an elf He's the only, like... That scene when he is taking Bronwyn's little fuck out of the forest and the orcs are chasing him, that is one of the best seas, uh, scenes in this season. I Up mean, until they leave the forest and then the CG ruins it. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. Okay, Arondo was good, Elrond was good, Durin was good. Okay, Elrond's still ugly, but he was good. The elves still don't feel like The elves, elves are so fucking ugly, man. But yeah. anyway, that aside... <laughs> Um, but not what majestic. else was good? What else was good? Uh, Kazadoom, Doran. Kazadoom was was nice. Um, yeah. Uh, Doran's wife. I can never remember her name. That's a problem as well. The fact that I don't remember anyone's names is a problem. Um, some of the action scenes were good, to be fair. Like when, yeah, when the horses rode in. Uh, the action scenes with Arondil when he's like flipping and jumping and shit. The orcs were really good. Uh, yeah. Adar, Adar's story was interesting. Oh, he, yeah, like, yeah, who, who? <laughs> yeah. Forgot about him already. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, the creation of Mordor was visually very cool, but when you look, think about it logically, absolutely stupid. Um, like, yeah, it's just like, yeah, there, there were... Again, we're not saying it's just a bad series. It's weird. It had some good things, um, but it's just very disappointing knowing what it could have been. Yeah. Knowing what we could have gotten from, you know, if simply... Because, like, look, again, I'm going to compare to House of Dragons just because it came out at the same time. I'm sorry. But we... Very, we know, like, very boldly said that House of Dragons is probably going to be shit, and we're not looking forward to it. Yeah. Ha, and we'd be, and we were like, nah, it's going to be meh, because Game of Thrones ended so bad. Boom! Turns out House of Dragons is fucking lit. Like the writing yeah. is so good, and everything's so good, and it's so simple yet fucking effective and beautiful, right? And then it just feels like. Like, the fact that Lord of the Rings, I mean, Rings of Power, cost ten times as, okay, maybe not ten, but, like, a lot more than House of Dragons, and yet House of Dragons is superior in everything. It just makes it feel like B-Tech. You know, it just makes yeah. it feel like, meh. I you think, know, it feel I think when you have this much money involved, you have no excuse to put out a bad show. Legit. Like, um, hire the best writers. Hire the best... Okay, again, the, the, the cinematography and bada bing, okay, fair enough, that was good. Good enough, at least. But hire the best writers. Surely you need to have the best writers. Mm. And, I'm sorry, these weren't the best writers. Because if the because if these were the best writers, then the, the House of Dragon ones were definitely ten times better. Yeah. Um, Andor has better writers. Um, freaking Breaking Bad. Freaking sopranos but i mean there's so many like series that had like incredible writers and they were the fraction of this show's budget mm -hmm. get the best writers you know i'm actually uh quickly looking up like the writers and stuff please for the episodes please and i've never heard of these people like it just makes <laughs> you think like you know why if this is truly meant to be amazon's magnum flagship. opus yeah. right it's their flagship show this is amazon the most everyone knows amazon this mm -hmm. is jeff bezos there's so much money surely you'd be like right i want the best of everything in this whole show and yeah. you know they they have the resources to do it and it just like yeah it just makes you think what could have been you know it just yeah. feels like that show of like Ah, it could have been great, yeah. but it ended up being. Mm. So, c'est la vie, eh? alas, it is what it is. I mean, to quote Marlon Brando, I could have been a contender. Mm. That's yeah. literally all I have to say about the show. 
But yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of Season 1 of Rings of Power. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let us know. Marcus, do the outro. I will fight you all in the comments. I cannot wait. <laughs> well, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss any of our content because we post stuff weekly when we can be bothered with work. Well, thank you so much for watching. I've been Marcus. And I've been Seb. Peace.